What we think of as sepsis is not just one disease. Patients with sepsis can present with a number of different signs and symptoms, which makes diagnosis challenging. Two screening tools, SERS and QSOFA, are useful, but are not specific to sepsis. Positive screens for either SERS or QSOFA can be seen in a variety of other illnesses, such as pancreatitis, burns, trauma, anaphylaxis, and liver disease. Conversely, these screens can be negative even when sepsis or any of these other sepsis mimics are present. As clinicians, we face the difficult question of determining whether or not a patient's signs and symptoms are caused by an infection. To diagnose sepsis, the presence of an infection as a cause of SIRS or increasing QSOFA score is necessary. Some biomarkers, such as procalcitonin and C-reactive protein, can help differentiate sepsis from other conditions, but these can be abnormal in some non-infectious conditions too. Pathogen detection and host immune response are more reliable methods to detect whether an infection is present. Cultures are the traditional method for demonstrating the presence of infection, but cultures are slow and rely on techniques that are more than a century old. Molecular diagnostics are faster and rely on the detection of DNA, RNA, or proteins that are manifest when bacteria, viruses, or fungi are present. These more sensitive tools also include respiratory viral panels, beta-D-glucans testing, and Aspergillus galactomannans testing. Additionally, there are several new tests that detect the host immune response to infection. Cellular tests can detect changes in white blood cells. These include changes in monocyte distribution width or changes in neutrophil rheology. Gene assays can detect expression of host genes that are activated during infection. These include septocyte and others under development. With the use of these improved diagnostic tests, we can make it easier to diagnose sepsis and harder for the diagnosis of sepsis to be missed. The future of sepsis diagnosis is bright.